Let's say you go to a shop to buy groceries. Just when you're at the billing counter, the shopkeeper tells you, sorry, you can only buy three pieces of vegetables and one piece of fruit. Uh, we're facing a shortage. Sounds like a third world nation struggling to feed its population. Uh, we're talking about the UK, our former colonizers and the sixth largest economy in the world. Today, we'll be looking at why is the UK back to rationing food like it is World War III and why should the UK's condition serve as a red flag for all of us. Welcome back to Revolution Read On, a daily podcast where we break down one story from the world of business and finance. Click on the subscribe button to never miss an update from us. Here's your story for today. COVID is gone mostly, and the world has learned to live with the supply chain disorders of the Russia-Ukraine war. So why is the UK still facing shortages? Why are shelves of UK's superstores empty? Because of high import dependence, rising costs of electricity, climate change, and Brexit. We'll explain in detail. First, high import dependence. The UK's self-sufficiency for vegetables is 56% and only 16% for fruits. Reason? The UK's climate. On an average, the UK gets 1,403 hours of sunlight each year. India gets anywhere from 2,600 to 3,200 hours of sunlight. Now, the UK does grow some fruits and vegetables in the winter as well, but this requires the use of greenhouses which use electricity to keep the planted area warm. But thanks to the Russia-Ukraine war last year, the prices of electricity were super high. Many farmers couldn't afford these high costs. Veggies, especially salad veggies like lettuce and tomatoes, which are currently in short supply, usually have a very low margin. So many farmers didn't grow these crops in winter and have only just planted them. Result, the UK had to rely on imports. But why have imports stopped? Climate change. The UK mainly relies on Spain and Morocco for fresh veggies and fruits. Spain has seen colder than normal temperatures this year, which means some crops haven't grown well. Meanwhile, Morocco has faced floods which have destroyed crops. So the government has restricted exports. In short, climate change is the culprit. Because of this, the UK could soon see shortages of more veggies and fruits. These shortages are expected to last at least until May. Now, why are other European nations not facing these problems? Not all of them could be 100% self-sufficient. Well, the answer to that is Brexit. From 2020 onwards, Britain stopped being a part of the European Union, leading to Brexit. That's Britain's exit from the EU. Think of the EU like a group of cool kids in school. If you're friends with them, you get all the perks, the best seat in the cafe, and the best ways to bunk classes. What if you're not a part of the group? Tough luck, you're gonna have trouble. That's exactly what has happened with Britain. When it was a part of the EU, trade flowed easily. The union already had set supply chains and taxes for inter-union trade. But now that it is not a part of the EU, trade has a lot more barriers. According to a survey of the London School of Economics, the exclusion from the EU now means the UK has to conduct more regulatory checks leading to more delays. Plus, there are new taxes which also increase costs. Result, supply chain problems and delays in supplies reaching consumers. What can India learn from this? India is a khati piti country with a massive population. We need more and more food to feed our people. But thanks to growing climate change, the problem of our food security will keep rising. We're already concerned about our wheat crops this year because of rising temperatures. Our tea and coffee crops are also threatened by climate change. What's more, India right now imports a lot of food items, pulses, fresh fruits, snacks, oil seeds, and nuts. If these countries also continue to face climate change issues like us, we could also face shortages. 
So let's hope that we become self-reliant for food or even better, become a net exporter. What can we do to become self-reliant? Thank you for listening to this episode. We'll be back with more tomorrow. Until then, read on. Read on.